Uh, Megan, you said that you already have part A and that was no problem. Can you tell us your answer for part A just so we can? Okay, 56.57. And then we want the angle AVB. So my plan for this is because I recognize that the triangle AVB is isosceles. I know that angle AVO and angle OVB are going to be congruent. So my plan here for angle AVB is going to be two times angle AVO, which should be two times um, tan inverse of opposite over And that should do it for us. Let's type that in real quick and make sure that that comes out to be what I hope it does. So that gives me 3880 or 3894, I guess, is what I have. Uh, the answer I have is 3687. Hmm. Is it possible this? Nope, that's the right number there. What if I did two times sine inverse of opposite over hotness? I think it's just a typo. That must be what's going on. I'll make a note here. Um, this is question eight B. Okay, I'll take a second look at that a little bit later. But it, to me, it just looks like it's a typo in my answers. Okay. Um, but good, good question. Olivia? 22 okay so the volume what kind of shape is this this is a pentagonal prism so the volume for a prism is area of the base times the height. So when we say height for a prism, the height is the distance between the bases. So in this case, that's the distance between the two pentagons. So that's going to be 5. OK with that? What I need to do now is calculate the area of that pentagon. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take it as the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. You happy there? So the rectangle should be easy. That's just 2 times 3. And the area of the triangle is, should be pretty easy. Since I know A or C and H are 4.5 meters above the ground, I know that this segment here has to be 2.5 because I know from here to here is 2. You good with that? Okay. So I can just do 1 half base, which is 3, times the height, which is 2.5. Okay. 
So that should give me 975. So if I do that times 5, I get 4875. I don't know why I wrote degrees. And these are meters cubed. Does that feel okay there, Olivia? Okay. Surface area, a little bit trickier here. So the surface area, let's see, I have two pentagons, right? I have the rectangle that's on the bottom. I have the rectangles that are on the sides. There's two of those. And I have two rectangles that are on the roof. Okay with that. So we know the area of the base is 9.75. The rectangle on the bottom is just 3 times 5. The rectangle on the sides, that's these guys there, are 2 times 5. And the rectangle on the roof, well, we know the one side length is 5, but we still need this side length there. And that we weren't given, so we're going to have to calculate that. So we know this side is 2.5. And we know that this side is half of 3, so 1.5. So I can just do the Pythagorean theorem there to get that. So that's 2.915. Oops. So if I go ahead and add all that junk up, I should get the desired result, and I do 8365. Does that feel okay there? So again, just breaking it down into sub pieces really made life a lot easier there. Um, and in general, that's a really effective strategy when you have like a kind of a complex looking figure. So you're welcome. Uh, uh, Valerie, 18, sure. I was having a Monday morning moment there. I was able to conjure the last name, but I was struggling to come with the first one. I got there though. So this is 18. Okay, so the, vo the area for the box is length times width times height. So literally that's it. All we need to do there. That should be pretty easy with that one. So the surface area, um, let's kind of just sketch a little bit of a picture here. So 20, 12, 16. Okay with that? So my surface area is going to be two times the rectangle on the front. We have two times the rectangle on the side and then two times the rectangle that's on the top. Okay with that? So the front rectangle is 16 times 20. The side rectangle is 12 times 16. 
and the top rectangle is 20 times 12. So I get 1504 centimeters squared on that. You're welcome. So again, sketching the picture to identify the three rectangles and what their dimensions were was pretty helpful there. Um, and if you didn't think to do that and you're just kind of like guessing at what the dimensions would be, draw a picture. It really is often very helpful if you're not given one. Uh, Jacob. Sure. Is this like a whole page? You guys pick all the fun ones. Man, you got me good. Thirty-two. Okay, so the area of the base, well the base is a circle, so that I'm just going to use pi r squared there. So how about 25 pi centimeters squared? Wants the height. Well, I know that the volume of this cylinder is 8,000. Told me that in the problem. And I know that that's going to be equal to pi r squared times height. So I'm just going to take that 8,000 and divide it by 25 pi. So there I get 101.86 centimeters. Everybody okay there? The total external surface area for the bin. Well, I know that the surface area for a cylinder is two times the area of the base. Um, plus 2 pi r h. But we're told this is a trash can, right? So there's really no top to it. So there's just really going to be a 1b there. So when I do that, I'm going to just get 25 pi, that was the area of the base, plus 2 times pi times 5 times that 10186. So when I do that, I get 3278.54 centimeters squared. Okay, uh, part B then says state whether this design is practical or not. So, what's one feature you'd really want your trash can to have? You wouldn't want it to tip over, right? Basically, what we're describing is a trash can that's kind of going to be shaped like a pen, right? It's got a little tiny radius and really, really tall. Probably not very practical, right? So I would say this is very likely to tip over. You have this little tiny radius, but really tall. Pretty stupid looking trash can. It's a really tall, well, 100 centimeters is not that tall. I mean, it's like hip height probably. The problem is it's like the size of a soda can around. Yeah. 
Apple Pad. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's what I would I'd write something to that effect there for B. Marin also designs a cylindrical waste bin with a volume 8,000 centimeters. She decides to fix the radius of its base so that the total surface area of the bin is minimized. Let the radius of the base for Marin's waste paper bin be R and let its height be H. Write down an equation in terms of R and H using the volume of the bin. Okay. Sorry, I guess 8,000. There you go. There's my equation. Then it says show the total surface area of the, of the bin is given by the equation A equals pi R squared plus 1,600 R. So what I'm going to do is I know that my surface area is pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. That was the formula that I used previously. Notice there's no h in the formula that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my volume equation and get the h by itself. And then I'm just going to substitute that in for H here. When I do that, I notice that the pi's cancel and one of the r's cancel. And then 2 times 8,000 is 16,000, and I still have 1R left in my denominator. Everybody okay there? So now it asks us to find the R that minimizes the total external surface area of the waste paper bin. So I'm going to just use my calculator to do this. So I'm going to type in the equation for um, that we just made here. And I'm going to use x instead of r. And I'm going to graph this where x is the is a dimension, right? X is basically the radius for that bin. So since we're talking about a radius, the smallest value I could have there is zero, because it has to be actually a measurement. And I don't know what the biggest value is. Maybe I'll pick something up to say 100, because I know that before when the radius was really small and the height was tall, the height was like 100-ish. I can always go back and change that if I feel like I need to. Uh, the y coordinate is going to represent the surface area. So again, that has to be a positive value, so I'll start with zero. And the surface area I got in the previous problem was like 3,000 and change. So maybe I'll pick 5,000 as my biggest possible surface area. I don't really know. If I need to make it bigger, I can always go back and make it bigger. But I know there's a surface area smaller than 5,000. So, okay. This is what I got. So the value of x that I'm interested in is the one right here, where the function is minimal. So to find that, I'll press second and trace and choose the minimum command. And I'll scroll over to where I'm on the left side of that minimum. That looks good, and I'll press enter. Now I'll scroll over to where I'm on the right side and press enter. And then I'll move close and pick my guess. So 1366 seems like the value there that's going to work. Is everybody okay with how I did that? And if I want the value of H, then I'm just going to plug it into this formula that previous answer that I just got. 
So when I do that, I get just about the exact same thing. Jacob, are we okay so far? Okay. So, do you think this is better than the previous person's? Yeah, if the height and the base are really kind of the same, that's gonna be a heck of a lot more sturdy, but it doesn't look like any trash can I would have seen because it's gonna be wider than it is tall. Because remember, the radius is only half the diameter, so the twice as wide as it is tall is kind of a weird trash bin. But it won't tip over, so you got that. Jacob, what do you think? Was it as bad as you thought it was? No. no. Just had a lot to do, right? Yeah. And some of it was kind of abstract because you're working like rearranging some equations or whatever, but none of it was really hard equations to rearrange, but maybe a little unfamiliar of a task. The hardest part was breaking your calculator out to find that minimal value, right? Okay. Um, Others from these assignments. Okay.